I'll work with a large audience will effectively change its own meaning over time. This is part of what I've been trying to talk about with my references to the B-movie, but I found it also holds true and should point you in the way to other things to re-examine from the year 2007. I recently looked again at a movie, Heroes, which I've talked a little bit about because it's been very influential in terms of how its characters and situations and some key phrases were incorporated into later blockbuster blockbuster entertainment like the movie Frozen. This phrase, there's a storm coming, was part of season two in Heroes. And the key to it was Claire, a woman with the fundamental ability of them all. And that is to regenerate tissue with the applications of curing disease, regrowing the lost parts, and reversing aging. So she's the ability that gets everything else started, and she's the one who offers a potential cure to a virus. There's a threat in season two of a viral pandemic, which would destroy 93% of the world's population, getting the population down to about the same number as mentioned in the Georgia Guidestones. And this virus gets out in an alternate future, but then is contained in the reality that is eventually leading to the later seasons of the series. But the phrase, the storm, is not completely explained, even though it seems to be very important. It has to do with either the storm of revelation that will come out if it becomes public knowledge that certain people have these special powers, or the storm that will be necessary to keep the powers from being exposed. Though it's a viral storm, and this is later incorporated and could be used to reinterpret the meaning of some of the phrases from the song Let It Go from Frozen. We would once have not considered it possible and would not put it in our potential store of meanings as we interpret the song Let It Go for the storm to be a reference to disease or a virus. But this was actually made explicit in, as a joke, in a follow-up short film to the first movie called Frozen Fever in which Elsa gets a cold and says the cold never bothered me anyway. Now at the time, that would just be a, a throwaway joke and not something we would take seriously because we would not think of a cold or a coronavirus as something life-threatening. That, of course, has now changed. So if we look back at the things we once watched, we can find that perhaps we don't view these same movies or TV series in the way we once did. Our context for viewing them has dramatically changed. One was once considered utterly ridiculous things for people to do that they would never do even if they had had them programmed in them as children and had an impulse to recreate them are now seen as things that are actually playing out in real life dramas. The, the phrase, the cold never let the storm rage on, the storm being the, the conflict, the internal raging between letting out the access to powers and the knowledge that they exist versus trying to hold it in. And lockdown and isolation are major themes, both in Heroes and in Frozen. But in the joke mode in the short film, when Elsa says the cold never bothered me anyway, she is showing the symptoms of having her capabilities as a normal person somewhat impaired. She has the sniffles, she has the fever, she's feeling a little groggy. But what aren't affected are her powers. She still has powers, and when she sneezes, she makes little snowmen, for instance. So her powers aren't shut off, which would be the threat mentioned from the original Heroes series, because the virus was what was used to shut down the powers of extraordinary people. The unfortunate side effect of that being that it would kill them, and if it got into the regular population, it would kill all of the regular people, and shut down any potential of regular people to eventually gain extraordinary powers. So the whole phrase, the storm, has to do with the struggle. And the idea of what constitutes catastrophe, or Armageddon, has to do with the decentralization of power, as symbolized or shown in the way that people in the Heroes series gain powers. What we've often thought of as the doomsday clock, the two mechanisms are shown in the movie as 
first horrible things and then things which people can do. Some of you can actually make fire. There's one who can control the weather. And this has been mentioned as a possibility of something that would destroy the world and the closer it is to happening, the closer the doomsday clock supposedly clicks toward midnight. It's a strange combination of things which don't seem to make much sense until you watch the Heroes series and try to get inside your head uh, and the heads of other people who think in a particular way, thinking that the decentralization of power would be dangerous. They say that we need these powers to deal with threats like global warming. Well, global warming, and which is supposedly making villainizing carbon, saying that carbon is getting too complicated, could be, and I think is really, a symbolic representation of the fear that youth will get out into the general population, just as Claire's ability might get out into the general population. Carbon C60, uh, the buckyball molecule, a type of carbon that's arranged in the shape of a soccer ball, has had promising experimental results with rats. It was given to populations of rats to test if it was toxic and had the strange side effect of making the sample group of rats live 90% longer. Carbon is also a beauty treatment, as is water, and these are the two supposed villains that are getting put into the, the atmosphere. And nuclear holocaust, the other threat uh, on the doomsday clock, is something that's explicitly shown in the Heroes series as that what might happen if one person developed ex extraordinary powers and was extremely stressed and like Elsa couldn't hold them in and became a living nuclear bomb. So there's this idea now of the storm as something that people talk about in popular culture and what they think it means politically and otherwise. But those people that I've seen mention it have not explicitly tied it to its source. So we're dealing with a storyline whose antecedents, whose sources are not being explicitly mentioned in our discussion of that particular storyline. 